Self-sabotage does not have to be your story. The devil wants you to believe that it does, but it does not have to be your story. And I have gone through multiple experiences in my life where I self-sabotaged things because I was screaming for attention. And at the root of that was I was hurting. I was hurting and I needed help. I didn't know how to communicate it. I didn't know how to communicate what was going on, but ultimately I had believed a lie and I allowed that pain to then hurt other people because I was so far deep in the agreement that self-sabotage was going to be my story, that I wasn't going to be able to break the cycle, that God couldn't do anything, that he had already written this for me. And my message to you is that is not what the Father wants for your life. Self-sabotage does not have to be your story. It can end right now, whatever cycle you've been in. For me, I had cycles of self-sabotage in relationship. I would get very close to women, then walls would come up, and I would find a way to end it. I would either end it myself, I would do things to cause agitation, irritation, resentment, whatever it might be, and I caused problems in relationships. I was emotionally abusive. I would use words to twist things and make it very difficult for the other person. And self-sabotage is what I thought would be my story. I had a hope and a dream for a family, but I didn't even know what that meant because I wouldn't even allow myself to go believe that that was possible given the pattern that I'd seen over time. It wasn't until I met my wife at a time when I was going through my spiritual awakening and a really deep healing in my heart and in my mind as to what it meant to engage in relationship with somebody from a healthy place where I could actually receive the love they had for me even when I didn't deserve it. And that was a a game changer. I remember one time my wife and I were in the car, we were engaged, we were about to get married, and there was some silly argument that blew up into something that it wasn't. And I was doing my old pattern of getting really agitated, using my words, being hurtful with my words. And for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit, I believe, intervened through my wife and she stopped everything and she looked at me and she said, I love you and I didn't deserve it. And she said, I love you with tears in her eyes and I'll never forget it because I broke down crying. I broke down crying and I realized I was afraid that she wouldn't love me and I wanted to test her and have her prove it to me that I was truly lovable even though I wasn't deserving. And the Holy Spirit intervened and I believe that's how he started this process of really assuring me, TJ, yes, while we were still sinners, you and I, Christ died for us, but that's a real thing that we can experience in terms of the love he has for us. His perfect love is made possible through people. And I promise you, there are people who will show you if you're willing to receive the love that God has for you. But you have to make that choice to receive it, even though you're undeserving. Most people, their problem, especially when it comes to relationship stuff, most people is that they're not willing to receive the love that God has for them through that other person. And as for me, that's something that is still a work in progress, still a pattern that I'm breaking. But there was a big breakthrough moment there as my wife and I ended up getting married. And then we ended up going through other challenges along the way. But there's no question in my mind in terms of the choice that she made and the choice that I made and the the reason that we ended up together and, and how that ended up healing my heart in a lot of ways that I needed. Self-sabotage is not my story, even though the pattern continued in other ways, it ended in that process of getting engaged, getting married, and allowing the Lord to really heal me through my relationship with my wife. So that's a testimony for you. I know it can be for many other people. I've worked with clients from, you know, this isn't the number one reason why we start working together, but relationships inevitably in terms of fulfillment It's hard to have a fulfilled life without healthy relationships and relationships inevitably become a part of conversation. I've had many, many conversations with clients who they start their journey and they they started it because there was a really rough ending to a relationship. And then guess what? Over the years of working together, they end up engaged. I get invited to their wedding. And that's happened multiple times. And to see God move in people's lives where there's 
patterns of dysfunction and healing that happens. I can tell you, it's not just my story. It's your story too. You are not a victim of your own self-sabotage, the lie the devil wants to, you to believe. Self-sabotage is not your story. I've had many other examples of what self-sabotage can look like. I've had it happen in my life with money. Many times over, I've had starting over with money. For somebody who's gifted in making money, I have mismanaged money many times, and the Lord has used that as an opportunity for me to grow in my character. There was another example where I actually thought I needed to be in a different place financially for us to have children. There was a core wound associated with my adoption. I was adopted at birth, and it, it really developed this fear somewhere inside because of a, a lie I'd believed that I didn't want to have children because there was some fear connected with the idea of having children. And wouldn't you know that I ended up putting us 200 grand in debt, open doors in my life, demons, some other things. And that ended up being a major self-sabotage situation. Now my wife and I at a time where we were trying to have children, well, now we had 200 grand in debt because of dumb decisions. I even lied to her about it. It doesn't sound right even saying it, but that's what happened. And as we went through the process of me confessing, reconciliation, all of these things, getting delivered of demons, demons talking out of my mouth and finding freedom and just coming back to the Lord on this whole process going, what happened? And he showed me the root of it in this whole fear of children. Well, wouldn't you know that God wiped out the debt within nine months, over 200 grand, completely gone within nine months, savings replenished, and we got pregnant with twins. And I have two beautiful daughters with my wife, Self-sabotage does not have to be your story. I have many other stories of people who break the pattern of self-sabotage. Yes, it may be difficult. Yes, there may be things that you've developed over the course of your lifetime and that happened or started generations before you, but by the power of the blood of Jesus, by your choice to not agree with self-sabotage as your story, it doesn't have to be your ending. So if you're watching the first thing you need to know and the first dominating belief you need to wrestle with God on to come into agreement with is that self-sabotage does not have to be your story. And he is greater than any mistake you could ever make. You just got to stick with him and you got to come into agreement with that core belief. Self-sabotage does not have to be your story.